The UIL, which controls Texas public high school sports, has very specific rules. And one in regards to football says that teams must practice at the start of the season without pads and without going full contact for four days. But on that fifth day, they can go all out. So at 12.01 a.m. this morning, four Southeast Texas teams went all out. Six Sports' Andrew Chernoff has more on Midnight Madness. <laughs> If you were in one of four different Southeast Texas communities last night and could not sleep due to loud noise and big hits, well, you can blame Midnight Madness. First day of pads. Can't, it don't get no better than this. It's fun. I'm, I'm always pumped up afterwards. I can't ever go to sleep. I don't go to sleep till about 6 that next morning. At 12.01 last night, high school football teams could begin wearing pads at practice. Our first stop takes us to 24A's LCM. Head coach Randy Crouch says it was about time for his team to strap on the pads. Well, there's only so much you can do in shorts, and then when you get the pads on, you can kind of start seeing where your team's going to fall in and, and who's going to be where and, and that kind of thing. Last year, the Bears missed the playoffs. This year, in order to make it back to the postseason, Crouch says the team has to cut down on mistakes. You can't turn it over. You've got to be ready to go. You can't have any loose ends. You've got to be playing uh, your best football every week. On to 21-3A's West Orange Stark, where the intensity was high. Head coach Cornell Thompson says that the players and community embrace this new Mustang tradition of midnight madness. You see the people, number of people like the game, so they're here. They got to go to work tomorrow like the rest of us, and they're here watching it. Stayed with us here to 2.30 in the morning. For the first practice with pads, Thompson says it wasn't bad. If I had to gauge it or give it a grade, it's probably about a C plus or a B minus. You know, when you say not bad, it wasn't a D and it wasn't an A. So somewhere in between. Destination number three on this trip takes us to District 12 2A Division II Deweyville. If you don't think the culture has changed with second year head coach Chris Babin, think again. Obviously by the, the turnout that we have in our little small town, it's a big deal to more, more people than just our football players. It's a big deal to the community, so uh, that's why we do it. Last year, the Pirates made it to the postseason for the first time since 2006. This year, their goals are higher. I want to go 10-0. and 0. I want to make a deep run as far as we can go. I think we got a good team this year. And finally, we end at 11-1A Division II Evadale. Last night was a date that the players have circled on their calendars since before practice started. Well, that's, that's the first thing they'll ask you when they come in. You know, Coach, uh, we, we're going to do Midnight Madness. So far this year, the players really like their team. Well, this year we've been more of a team than all the years I've been in high school. So I think we'll do pretty good. Now that the first practice with pads is out of the way for these schools, the next big event will be their first scrimmages. Those begin next week. With a look at Midnight Madness, Andrew Chernoff, KFDM 6 Sports.